All right, back with us again is good friend of DraftKings and assistant coach for the Eastern Conference top seed, Philadelphia's Dave Yeager. How are we feeling right now, coach? Feel great, man. Feel great. Finish the season, regular season off in first place uh, in the Eastern Conference. You know, I, I told my wife, I, I've told my family, I, I, no matter how long you do this, you may never get an opportunity to be an Eastern Conference champion or a Western Conference champion. So uh, to be part of something like this is, is very special. Yeah, for sure. Because like when we were talking with you back in March, like we discussed how you were holding steady at the top of the conference standings, like despite facing multiple adversities, including that big injury to Joel Embiid. So what has the feeling and mood around the locker room been now that you've kind of proved to yourself, hey, you can overcome all of that? Yeah, it's, you know, the, the journey of the season is long. And as you look at different stretches of it, you know, there was times where we played strength of schedule, you know, was very difficult. And then we knew like if we could get to the last 10 games of the year um, that we played a tough schedule as far as travel wise, we played five games and seven nights there. We played six and nine uh, as part of that stretch. Uh, but the competition, maybe some of those teams weren't as, as at the top of their conferences uh, as, as, as we had played earlier in the, in the season. So getting through those tough stretches without some guys, uh, Ben had a stretch where he wasn't able to go for a couple. Yep. Uh, and, and so to, to get through that and the resilience that the guys have shown, uh, the leadership that Doc Rivers has shown, it's just been terrific. Yeah. And you, you know, I'm sure you have a lot to say as well about like the leadership of, of Joel Embiid when he is on the court. Like he's been an absolute force. We're we're talking about averaging north of 28 points per game, which is fourth in the entire league. I mean, everyone sees the numbers he puts up, right? But what about the impact? What's the impact that he has on the rest of the team when he's on the court? Well, I mean, first of all, he's probably everybody in our organization and that plays with him feels that he's the, he's the MVP. You know, I mean, uh, what his impact is 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 cannot be discounted enough. Like he. He's just a big stud. And I think we look at the we look at the scoring numbers, especially, and he absorbs rebounds. But his whole game of you have to the game gets really easy when you have to have two people guard the ball and he makes a second man play him. And that opens up everything for everybody else. Uh, so it's not just about him scoring the basketball in the low post. His passing is terrific. Uh, his leadership, getting guys in spots rolling uh, more often in pick and rolls, which creates opportunities for Seth Curry, for Danny Green, um, and just being being the force that he is. And then I think defensively he doesn't get the credit uh, that maybe he, he deserves. He, he patrols the middle. I always said, you know, our bigs um, lead the defense. And he's been more and more vocal because he's back and he can see behind everybody's head. And, and the louder he is and the more we communicate uh, as a group in general, but he's, he's gotten much, much better at it. And that helps us a lot. I mean, talk about being louder here. What's it been like having that added energy with fans back in the arena? Dude, it's really, it's really cool. Cause I mean, you know, I haven't been here. I mean, I've been here as an opposing head coach. Um, and it's like, you know, you just, at that point, you're kind of just locked in and you do, but yeah. to be able to enjoy it as a part of the 76ers organization uh, and the passion, you know, we can listen to the talk radios and we can read, read the newspapers and read all the stuff on the internet. But when you're there, you can feel it. And, uh, and we're at what, almost 50%. And you can feel it. You can just imagine what it's like when it's really rock and rolling in a playoff series at 100%. So hopefully we'll get there. Yeah, and last year with the playoffs, like in the bubble, home team advantage, like didn't really exist. I mean, you guys went 29 and seven at home this year. So yeah. how excited are you to kind of have that extra advantage now, you know, back in your hands as the top seed in the conference? You know, and from 40,000 feet, being out last year or being in the other conference in, you know, the years prior to that for 12 years, I uh, always kind of looked at it like, yeah, that's a, that's a tough place to play, but especially lately, they seem like they win a lot of games at home, you know, and now I'm here and you see the comfort level that guys have and the support that they know they have everywhere throughout the community to play in at home because the record has been good. And, and I think we've made strides in our road record, which is a big improvement and also a big reason why I think you end up with the number one seed. Uh, but that home record going into the playoffs is huge. Having the higher seed is huge because of both of those two, two things. So uh, we're really excited about where we are. Uh, take 16 wins here, coach, to yeah. be the champion. I mean, what, what's the biggest X factor for this team to hit that goal? Well, I think every team's in the same boat as far as if, if injuries, right? And now there's a subset of that, or maybe even its own category of what happens if somebody gets COVID, you know what I mean? Or anybody in our staff, like we're very, very conscientious about not putting ourselves in positions where, you know, hey, what if, what if I did something silly and then I go, oh yeah, I was uh, I was around Joel Embiid within six feet for more than 4.2 minutes in a row and now he has to be out for 10 or, you know, who knows? 
So those that is a big issue, and that, nobody wants to hear about that stuff. But that is uh, what it is. And then, you know, can you can you get stops? For us, we're, you know, I think we could rate it out as the number one defensive team, or in some metrics, maybe second best. But if we can get stops, that means it's a lot easier for our offense to get out and go. And uh, rather than look at it from, well, if our offense would get up to the top five, then no, like our off, our defense can be absolutely suffocating. And you know, you guys have seen this for the last couple of years. Yep. And my first year here, uh, with what Ben can do, with Tobias flying around with his range, Danny Green's able to do some things. Now you got Matisse Tybel coming off the bench, but Joel's anchoring the whole thing. We've got Dwight Howard bringing some energy. So uh, I think that's the biggest thing for us. If we can absolutely lock people up, it, it'll it'll stress us down a little bit offensively. And then you know as well as I do in the playoffs. I don't anticipate the, your best players play more minutes. That's how you win. And uh, I think we'll see that as well. And uh, I think the offense will, will have an uptick a little bit because of that. All right. Before you get out of here again, an amazing regular season, you've got to describe to me that amazing regular season that has you in first place, top seed in the Eastern conference, describe it to me in one word. Excellence. I okay. think that that's the word I think whether it's just for this year or for the next five years, the, the definition of understanding this is what it takes to be at a high level. Doc is all in on it. Uh, the players are in on it. Like the level of professionalism, the work ethic and the sacrifice that's required. And we're seeing the fruits of that already now, but I think that can be entrenched for years going forward. I think that's fantastic. Love it. Way to set the tone, Coach. Dave Yeager, good catching up with you. Thanks for making time for DraftKings. It's been too long, man. Let's do it again. I know. Yeah, let's not do this like wait two months next time, okay? Hopefully yeah. we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Hopefully between series. There we go. 